Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Now, if you've been following or subscribing to this channel, you know that immigration law can be extremely complex and confusing. There are many parts or components to immigration law, including statutes, regulations, memos, etc. In addition, the various service centers and local offices may have their own internal policies and procedures on how they will approach cases and apply the law. Well, why is this important? So watch this video until the end for the answers and of course don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Now anytime a person wants to file a petition, an application, motion, appeal, etc., they must follow those statutes, regulations and memos. Now, one seemingly minor mistake, error or oversight, or even a miscommunication or missing document could result in a person's case being denied and they could possibly find themselves being placed in deportation or removal proceedings. But what are statutes? What are regulations? What are memos? And how do they apply to or affect your immigration case? Recently, the American Immigration Lawyers Association, or AILA, released a flyer discussing the differences among immigration statutes, regulations, memos, and DHS social media. So let's go through them as to what they are, what they mean, and how they apply to your case. Statutes. Under the U.S. Constitution, of course, the Congress has the authority to govern and regulate immigration. States cannot pass laws affecting U.S. immigration. Well, statutes are the laws that are passed by Congress and signed by the President, which provide the rights and obligations under the Immigration and Nationality Act, or the INA. They are binding on the governmental agencies such as DHS, USCIS, CBP, ICE. Regulations. Regulations are basically the applicable governmental agency's interpretation of the statutes that were passed by Congress. The agency, such as USCIS, will set forth the rules on how they will apply the relevant statutes as well as providing more details on what the statute encompasses and how a person may comply. So if the statutes are considered the bone, regulations provide some of the meat. I'll give you an example. There was a law called Section 245I, which required, among other things, that a person had to be physically present in the U.S. on December 21st, 2000. But what does physically present mean? And what are the types of evidence or proof a person can show to establish eligibility. Well, the statute itself was silent on that issue, but the regulations spelled out those details. Now, regulations are typically published in the Federal Registrar, giving people an opportunity to comment and eventually, if implemented, are again published in the Federal Registrar and put in the Code of Federal Regulations. Regulations have the force of law as well and must be followed when applying for immigration benefits. Policy memos. Policy memos or memoranda are basically announcements from the applicable governmental agency such as USCIS concerning its procedures and they provide additional guidance as to how that agency will apply the relevant statutes and regulations. Now, the government cannot make new laws or create new rights or obligations through their memos. And, of course, their memos do not have the force of law. However, courts do give the agencies wide deference or latitude when it comes to interpreting and applying statutes and regulations. Now, memos are similar to policy or procedural manuals on how the relevant governmental agency interprets statutes or regulations and how a person may comply. Social media. Now, in addition to statutes, regulations, and policy memos, DHS will sometimes announce policies and procedures on their website or via social media. Now, these social media posts do not have the force of law because the government cannot make new laws or create new rights or obligations by way of a media posting or a tweet. But social media posts still provide information 
on how DHS will interpret the laws and regulations and how they will be applied. Now, as you can see, immigration law is complex and confusing, but it still has to be followed and it must be complied with. Now, while USCIS must follow and apply the same law, some offices and officers strictly apply the rules while others may be more flexible, but they must work within the boundaries of the law. Now, if you hope to obtain immigration benefits you're applying for or to have your case approved, you must also comply with those statutes, regulations, and memos, which are constantly changing. That's why you should consider consulting with and retaining an attorney to represent you in connection with your applying for immigration benefits. As you can see, immigration law has so many facets and components that can literally change overnight based on a new memo being issued, a court decision, etc. An attorney is constantly updated on the current state of the law and any changes and can help you in convincing Homeland Security of your eligibility by pointing out or citing the relevant statute, the relevant regulation, the relevant memo, the relevant case. While retaining an attorney does not, of course, guarantee results, I think it greatly increases your chances of success rather than you're trying to learn immigration law or figure out what the current state of the law is. I hope you found this video informative and I will continue posting videos which I hope are useful to you or to people you know. Therefore, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfinkel, and thanks for watching U.S. Immigration TV.